Okay. Now, in your honest opinion, do you think that we're going to, we're headed for a recession? So this is, this is an interesting thing that, that I, I both been humbled on, I would say of, you know, if you, but also I think I still kind of cling to my original opinion. So uh, let me clarify around last year, it, a lot of people really started calling for a recession. Uh, and I was, I was one of those people anticipating it. And so, you know, obviously if you predict the recession forever, uh, eventually one's going to happen and you can claim to have been right, but you really have to be specific about, about when it's going to happen. And so I thought, you know, by this spring, we would have seen signs of recession. Uh, and honestly, there's been some evidence of slowdown, but really the economy has been much stronger than, than most people anticipated. But that doesn't mean that we're necessarily all in the clear. And it's something we wrote about it in the newsletter this week, um, it's called a, a yield curve inversion. And so it's sort of a, a very technical financial term and it's sort of jargon we, we would normally try to avoid, but just to define it for people, um, as we were talking about the Fed determines interest rates on the short end of the curve. So they set overnight borrowing rates. And normally what you would expect is sort of this time premium. You know, if you're going to borrow money for three months, that would be a lower interest expense than if you're going to borrow money for 30 years. You know, if you're asking somebody to lend you money for three decades, uh, they're going to expect a, a higher compensation in the form of interest rate than somebody, you know, you might lend money to for a couple months. But what we've seen with this in yield curve inversion is that um, short-term interest rates are actually far above uh, what it would cost to borrow money 10, 20, or 30 years out. And so sort of what that means is historically, that's been a actually a perfect indicator of impending recession. And so the timelines of when a recession is going to come, that's the little bit trickier part to, to anticipate. But um, actually, March 2022 is when the year, yield curve first inverted. And that's when three-month uh, borrowing rates exceeded 10-year borrowing rates. And so the last five times that that's happened historically, that's resulted in a recession within the next 18 months. So we're still in that 18 month window. Um, and, you know, I, like I said, I've been surprised at the resiliency of the economy generally, but at the same time, I, I wouldn't want to necessarily bet against this indicator that's historically been very accurate. Um, and there's sort of a, a logic to it. And the, the logic would be, you know, when short-term borrowing rates, um, jump up really high, but longer term rates stay low, which creates this inversion. Essentially what that is, is uh, financial markets predicting that you know, even though the Fed says they're going to keep hiking rates, actually in the next year or so, they're going to have to cut rates dramatically in response to a recession. So in many ways, it's almost like the market calling the Federal Reserve's bluff in many ways. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, I, like I said, I'm humbled by how strong it's, the economy's been. But we're still in that window of the yield curve has kind of predicted a recession and it, you know, it, it could easily come in the next so, six months. So when is that, when is that time, when is that forecasted time of the 18 months supposed to expire? Yeah. So, I mean, if we look at it, um, that, you know, March 2022 plus eight, 18 months would be November of, of this year. So you know, around uh, this fall, we would probably expect at the latest to see some strong indications of, of a recession. And honestly, if, you know, if the economy is still chugging along at that point, um, we would really have to revisit some of that conventional thinking of, you know, how reliable is this indicator of essentially financial markets, you know, holding one opinion, but that doesn't necessarily match uh, the real economic reality. And, you know, it, it gets tricky because you look at it with the Fed and they're trying to make economic project, pr uh, predictions and that's what you know they're using as the basis for their decisions to hike rates. But of course, that's a, a really centralized entity. Um, and so you know there's a, they have their teams of PhD economists, et cetera, et cetera. But ultimately it's you know a few dozen or a few hundred people trying to sort through economic data for a $20 trillion plus economy and, and make sense of it all. Whereas you know the quote unquote market is a more decentralized uh, machine, you know, taking all these inputs and outputs of, of pricing data and opinions from, you know, tons of, of investors all around the world. Uh, and so it's, it's more of a reflection of how, you know, tens, tens of thousands of investors are, you know, what their actual outlook is. And, you know, everybody's seeing different things of, you know, what's happening in their little corner of the world. And then you get this amalgamation of all that. And then that's sort of the market view. 
So it, it's a very interesting juxtaposition of sort of almost a decentralized prediction for what's happening, you know, taking in all, you know, the collection of, you know, every investor's um, opinion into this, this messy hole versus the outlook from this very centralized entity of, you know, very smart people with tons of data at their fingertips, but ultimately um, they are government bureaucrats and there's, you know, how, how well can you tr truly predict the, the future? And I mean, ultimately it's, it's unpredictable, but I, I, and many other investors tend to, to bet in favor of the market outlook, which is, you know, would be the yield curve inversion telling us that we were going to have a recession within the next 18 months from that first inversion, which was March, 2022. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to revise th our thinking if that indicator proves wrong, but in until it's proven wrong, it it's been pretty reliable and, and I'm inclined to, to stick towards that bet of we'll probably see a recession in the next six Interesting. months.